five Sun Belt Conference championships, seven Conference USA tournament championships, 15 NCAA tournament appearances, five time Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year, five time Conference USA Coach of the Year, and eight time South Region Coach of the Year. Above all of those accolades is Travis Hudson. But the historic coach puts the culture above it all. I'm a person that had never touched a volleyball in his life uh, the day I stepped on this campus. Travis talks a lot about the value of just treating people with respect. Gratitude. He's created a family network. I think trust is the, is the big one. But when did Travis Hudson's story truly begin? When I was in the fifth grade, my father lost his job in Louisville, and so we had to sell one of our places, and we sold our house in Louisville and moved down. And um, so I grew up over on Nolan Lake from the time I was uh, in the fifth grade through the end of high school. Probably the biggest influence in my life was my grandfather. A man named Merle Daniel taught Hudson the true value of life. I always said he's the smartest man I ever knew, uh, and he had about an eighth grade education. Remember what my grandpa used to always tell me, if you stand in the middle of the road, you'll get run over going both directions. I tell everybody I learned more lessons walking around that farm with him every day throughout, you know, the tough part of my life, which was, um, you know, my college years, really, when I graduated from high school and decided to come to Western Kentucky and, and get a college education. Hudson went on to be the first member of his family to earn a college degree. Little did he know, another opportunity was waiting for him on the hill, one he had never dreamed of. We were playing pickup basketball, and um, next to me in a game I was sitting out, there was a volleyball court. And so I just kind of went over and started watching and, you know, I didn't know the first thing about it, but I started watching them play. And then, you know, ever the person to stick his nose in there, I, you know, I asked him if I could jump in and play and I had no idea what I was doing. I was dreadful. You know, I started going back and just playing pickup and learning a little bit more. And I found some guys and I joined a league and it was an amazing beginning to something that I had no idea I was in store for. As time went on, Jeff Holzmeyer, the current head coach of the WKU volleyball team, began to see the potential in Hudson as they competed against each other. One day, Holzmeyer asked Hudson a question that would change his life. What I heard him say in that moment is, hey, why don't you come be my assistant coach? And what he was really saying is, why don't you come be our team manager? And uh, so I did, you know, I shagged balls and did laundry and folded towels and did all those things. and. Um, you know, just started going and, you know, my, my parents thought I was nuts because I was already working two jobs, but it was the good part of my day. Four years later, Hudson's role with the program remained intact. His commitment to the team grew as the head coach position became open in 1995. You know, and I was told at the time, you know, when I did apply, Travis, we really appreciate everything that you've done in your time here, but you know, you're probably not going to be a serious candidate for the position. And again, stubborn me said, well, I hope you don't think that's going to keep me from applying. And so I did. I'd, I'd like to tell you this story about how they saw this light in me and knew that I, this was what I was meant to. But the reality is they granted me an interview because by human resources standard, you have to interview multiple people. And I was local and I wasn't going to cost them anything. You know, that, that's the reality of why I even got an interview. You know, and I came out of it and didn't, you know, still thought this is a long shot, obviously at best. And unbeknownst to me, um, a lot of the parents on the, of the players at the time uh, reached out to the administration in that process and said, look, we, you know, we know he's inexperienced, we know he's new, but it's obvious to us already how much he cares about our daughters. So long story short, I ended up as the youngest head coach in Division I volleyball. I was 24 years old. It sounds terrible to say, but it's, it's just the reality. I got the job because nobody really cared about the volleyball program at Western Kentucky at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't heavily invested in, and you know, had it been more invested in, I probably would have never been a candidate. So I think things work out for a reason. Up next on Building the Culture. Well, I can tell you a funny story. After becoming the head coach in 1995, Travis had to make a decision that would impact the beginning of his career. I see coaches take over programs, and the first thing they do is, you know, kind of clean out all the players that are there and run them off and bring in their own kids. And 
I, c I couldn't allow, I didn't know a lot about coaching, but I knew that wasn't going to be me. He refused to let any players that were here that had scholarships go because he was going to honor. Those kids were told they were going to get a scholarship, and he refused to let them go, even though they weren't uh, the caliber of our players that needed to be here. To bolster the talent level, Travis looked to his wife to help with recruiting. She had to go to the first tournament I ever went to with me because she had played club volleyball and all that, and I didn't know where to even start recruiting. And so she kind of walked me through it a little bit the first time I ever went recruiting. I remember we were, I was going to go with him for the first one, and he, he was like, I don't even know how to read this. Where do I even go? And I was like, okay, just let's just figure it out. And so we, we kind of put things together. At that first club event, Travis met with Jenny Morgan, who had become a foundational piece of WKU volleyball. You know, Jenny, she was just, you know, she played the setter position. And again, that's like your quarterback in, in football. And so we, I knew we needed the right kind of kid there. Every mistake was her mistake. It didn't matter if it really was. She was tough as nails. I knew she was the one. Jenny, I think Jenny hosted every recruit we had for four years. I wanted girls to come to Western to experience what I was experiencing. And like I said, he didn't promise the moon. What what you see is what you were going to get. And it was the best four or five years of my life. I will forever be indebted to those kids in that first recruiting class because they, they, came, they came because they believed in me. And it was something that you wanted to be a part of. You wanted to be a part of building something from the, the ground up. And you may not be a part of it now. You're looking in at it, but you were the groundwork of developing what Western Kentucky Volleyball is now. With many new faces, Coach Hudson overcame several challenges to begin his career. After my first year, you know, we were 7 and 26, and my wife was my rock. She said, Travis, hang in there. You got this. And then my second year, you know, we were better. We were 18, 17, still not great. You know, my rock, my wife says, you know, Travis, hang in there. You got this. You can do this. After year three, we go 9 and 22, and so I'm leaning on that rock again, and she says, Travis, let's give it one more year, and if it doesn't work out, you can do something in business. Year three was when he had all of his recruits here, hence the comment, if you don't win this year, then maybe you should think about another career change. And that's when the alarm went off in my head that I was running out of time, because building a culture is not something you can snap your fingers and do, no matter what today's society believes. And in 2002, all of his efforts paid off when the culture he built culminated its first conference championship. That 2002 team will forever uh, stay in my heart because they, they changed the trajectory of what it could be here. You know, we had been close, we had been to the conference championship and not gotten over the hump in that championship match. We lost the first two sets. We were down 0-2 and came back in one and five uh, to, win, to win the first ever conference championship and get to the first NCAA tournament in school history. And, that was my, my wife would tell you, that was my dream as a coach. I just, I would tell her over and over just once, I want to know what it feels like for that last ball to hit and, and to see the look in these kids' eyes that they, that they did it, that they're champions and they made it to the NCAA tournament. The conversation that get, went on those years after that was, if God could just let me do it again, I'll know it wasn't a fluke. And so how many are we at now? I think we just celebrated our 15th or 16th time, which is just beyond my comprehension. With the success of the program growing, Travis still recognizes his first two recruits, Jenny Morgan and Melissa Stark. To this day, 28 years later, every time we go to the NCAA tournament, um, I sit down in the hotel wherever we are, and I call both of them and just thank them. Uh, just thank them for believing in me all those years ago when there was no reason to believe in me. And it's kind of become a tradition. They know the, the call's coming, and uh, it sounds different every time, but similar in the same way. And uh, because those kids had as much to do with, with this program being built as, um, as anything that I did. Up next on Building the Culture. You got it. Okay. I'm, I think that's, yeah, I've only tried to die three times. I think if anyone could win a national title at Western Kentucky University, this is the guy that can do it. After taking the volleyball program to its first NCAA tournament appearance in 2002, Hudson continued to build on his success. From 2003 to 2008, 
Hudson amassed a record of 164 wins and only 46 losses, creating a winning percentage of 781. After coming off three additional NCAA tournament appearances since 2002, Hudson encountered multiple obstacles off the court. One began in 2009. I had found a spot on my shoulder and I'd mentioned it to my doctor on a couple different occasions. You know, I don't remember this being here and he looked at it and he thought, he said, you know, it doesn't look like it's, because it was very atypical. You know, usually melanomas are really dark and this lacked pigmentation and, you know, and he said, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think it's a big deal. And so we kind of put it off for a couple years. I told my wife, I got out of bed on a Monday, didn't have anything to do. And I said, you know, I think I'm going to stop by and get that place taken off. I have no idea what pushed me to do it because I hate doctors. And I walked in and, and he came in and looked at me and he said, uh, it's a malignant melanoma. And, uh, you know, my world stopped for a minute. And I knew that it was a fast spreading cancer and I knew that it had been there for a while. He said, what made you go do that? I said, to be honest, I don't. I don't know, I just, it was on my mind, and he said, the best gift you'll ever give yourself. He said, there's no way to know for sure, but it was very, very close to penetrating deep enough to, you know, to enter your bloodstream, and it would have been a, certainly a different diagnosis. So, you know, I, I say all the time, you know, it means God had more for me to do here. Then in 2010, a trip to Mobile, Alabama came to a halt as they were traveling down I-65. But then all of a sudden we could feel that we were off in the grass and we were kind of bumping, bumping, bumping and everybody grabs hold and knows that something is not right. After it was all over, the people behind us on the interstate said that the bus had gone off the road to the inside and was headed down to that embankment and when it hit that ditch in the front corner that it hit so hard that the bus rocked up on off its wheels and then came back down and hit and started back up the other side. And we were about to go into oncoming traffic. When our driver had, had a heart attack, when he lost consciousness, he fell over to his right and his hands were on the wheel. And so when he fell to the right, it pulled the bus back down away from oncoming traffic, which still sends chills all over me. I start crawling toward the front of the bus and I grab that curtain and I pull it back and it was like a movie scene. I flip my body over top of him seat belted in and thank goodness I'm tall and I was able to reach down and find the pedals. When we finally ended up back in Bowling Green, I can still remember almost all of the players' parents were in the parking lot when we pulled in and just the looks on their faces was when it really hit me, I think. I sat in his office and I just looked around and I was like, what if I had to clean this out? Where would I even start? Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, the program continued to dominate their conference. From 2010 to 2017, the Hilltoppers only missed the NCAA tournament once in 2013. But on March 31st, 2018, Coach Hudson was driving to a hardware store when he realized something was wrong. As I was moving up Three Springs Road, I just noticed I couldn't catch my breath. My wife is a physical therapist, so she's in the medical field, and I called her as I was up to the end of Three Springs Road. I called her and said, hey, I don't, I feel kind of weird. He had just been home. He said, I need to, I need to find a, where's the nearest urgent care? I was like, what? So I could hear in his voice that something was wrong, and I was like, tell me, tell me what's going on. So as soon as he started telling me what's happening, I was like, I said, you're having a heart attack. You need to pull over. I said, I'm not pulling over, I gotta get somewhere. I pulled into the, to Greenview Hospital and I got out of the car and left the keys in it. And uh, you know, she said, you're having chest pains? I said, yes. She just took those little patches and put them on my chest and flipped on the monitor. And I just kind of glanced up at her and her face just went white. And that's the moment that I knew. I said, this isn't good, is it? And she said, uh, no, Mr. Hudson, you're, you're actively having a heart attack. One of the other nurses said, do you have your cell phone with you? And I said, yes. And she said, you should call your wife. Anytime you hear the nurse talking instead of him, you know, you start to panic. But Drew thought he was dead. And um, she said, Miss Hudson, um, are you coming to the hospital? I was like, I'm trying to get there as fast as I can. They got there and I was able to talk to her and my, and my son both before they rushed me in. He looks at Drew and he's like, I I'm going to be fine, buddy. 
and Drew was done. He, he was like, okay, that's good. And they were able to do an emergency um, procedure and put a balloon in there and balloon opened that artery. I was having a Widowmaker heart attack, which at the time I didn't even know what that meant. Widowmaker heart attacks, you have a 12% survival rate. If you're at the hospital when you suffer from a Widowmaker, your survival rate goes up to 20%. I just remember, you know, everybody talking while he's in the cath lab and I just walked out of the room and I went to the, um, put my back against the wall and I just slid all the way to the bottom and was just like, now what? What, what, if, what if we don't make it out of this one? And they wheeled me into the ICU and the nurse grabbed my chart and the first thing she said was, oh. And I said, oh, what? And she said, we usually don't see you up here. And so that was, I think, the, a gut punch uh, to both of us to be like, okay, what did we just survive here? After surviving the impossible three times, there is one word that continues to ground Hudson and the program. Gratitude. Um, if you ask our players, um, you know, what's the one thing Travis tries to instill in you? What are the two things? What are the two things that Travis tries to instill in you as an athlete here at Western Kentucky? I would hope they would say respect because that's something we talk about a lot. That's something that I learned from my grandfather and gratitude. You know, just, just being grateful for every single day, every single moment because, you know, I've, I've had three, three events that could have taken me from this earth and, you know, I, I do spend time wondering why not me. You know, most people say, do you say why me? And I spend more time thinking, why not me? Why, why was I not taken during that accident? Why was I not taken by that heart attack? Why not me? And the only plausible explanation that I can get is, is that I truly have more to do here. And indeed he does. But what's been the key to building the culture? That's one of the questions I get as a coach all the time is, how have you been so successful? How have you been so successful? And my answer to that is always the same because success is not at the center of what our program is about. I think if you're driven by winning and success, you give in to the temptations of valuing winning more than you value kids. This profession begs you to have ego. I'll never do it that way. I won't, I'll get out. If you gave me the choice between going and coaching a championship match or sitting down with a kid and helping them through something that's, you know, that they're struggling with in their personal life, I'll take answer B every time. But heading into his 29th season on the Hill, Hudson and his program continue to defy the odds on and off the court. Nobody said we'd ever make it to a Sweet 16 at a school that had never been to one. Nobody said we would have ever you know, been in the top 25 for nine of the last 10 years. We've done a whole bunch of unthinkable things. 28 years of 100% of, of our players getting college degrees, 28 years of being able to do this at my, my alma mater, and 28 years of seeing former players come back to a program that they still feel like they're a part of. Um, I'll, I'll trade that national championship for that any day.